far from your standard political entity. This group, officially recognized as the Communist Party of Peru, is a firebrand in its own right. They fuse the fiery principles of Marxism, Leninism, Maoism with the sparks of Gonzalo's thought. While rooted in ideological struggle, this far-left political party has transcended politics to influence various socio-economic aspects in Peru. The person behind the founding of the Shining Path is Abimael Guzman, who was once a philosophy professor at a university. Alongside a group of 11 others, Guzman started the party in 1969. He is often referred to as Presidente Gonzalo by his followers. A visit to China impacted Guzman, leading him to admire Mao Zedong's teachings. These teachings shaped the militant Maoist doctrine that the Shining Path follows. Interestingly, this radical entity is actually an offshoot of the Peruvian Communist Party, Red Flag. The original Peruvian Communist Party, from which the Red Flag split, was founded by Jose Carlos Mariategui back in 1928. So, what was the main objective of the Shining Path? In simple terms, this group aimed to dismantle the existing political framework in Peru and establish a communist regime led by peasants. They were not interested in taking cues from other Latin American rebel groups, such as the Tupac Amaru Revolutionary Movement, or MRTA. Moreover, they were determined to keep foreign ideologies at arm's length. Their sole focus was to shape Peru under their unique vision of communism. Researchers have shed light on the strategies of the Shining Path. The group primarily leveraged violence to undermine Peru's flawed democratic institutions. Their tactics actively deterred citizen participation in local governance. Efforts were made to cripple the national economy. They also sought to hinder government-led initiatives to provide aid and services to the population. In the secrecy of peaceful gatherings, Shining Path leaders established a military school. The purpose of this institution was to impart military tactics and the usage of weaponry to young recruits. Shining Path's initial success can be attributed to the Lima authorities' organizational instability, pervasive corruption, and their lack of readiness to engage in an internal war. This internal war would serve as a stark precursor to the tragic demise of tens of thousands of innocent villagers trapped in the crossfire of conflict. In 1980, Shining Path formally began its revolt against the Peruvian government. This action came after years of injustice and deprivation that had left the rural population poor. Under the leadership of Guzman, the rebellion was primarily based in Peru's rural areas, similar to the approach of other revolutionary guerrilla groups, such as FARC in Colombia. This tactic was chosen due to the typically weak governmental presence in these areas. The limited presence of Peru's armed forces in rural regions hindered their ability to counteract the revolutionary troops effectively. This allowed Shining Path the freedom to instigate an efficient guerrilla war against its adversaries, with little to no resistance. Shining Path initially set up its base in the mountainous regions of Ayacucho and Huanta, extending to the isolated areas around the central selva and south of Vilcabamba. The group targeted agricultural regions in the upper Huayaga Valley and the southern area of Puno, which also served to cut off any remaining urban links for its members. Guzman performed the role of the undisputed military and spiritual leader of the organization. In this regard, Shining Path functioned more like a hierarchical cult than a cell-based model. So, how did Shining Path manage operations financially? The rebel group adopted various methods, such as narco-trafficking, kidnapping for ransoms, and imposing arbitrary taxes on small businesses and residents. The group even convinced Colombian coca dealers operating in the area to pay inflated prices for raw coca, offering them protection and arms in return. Today, Shining Path is trying to revive this financial strategy, but on a smaller scale. Recognized as a terrorist organization by the U.S. based on its use of car bombings, kidnappings, and political assassinations, Shining Path ranked 41st on the U.S. list of top terrorist organizations in 2006. Initially, the group's violence was primarily directed at local government officials, police stations, and political leaders. However, Around 1983, they shifted their focus to wealthier peasants and heads of state agencies, intimidating them with violence and the threat of kidnapping. They even started attacking left-wing activists, grassroots leaders, and intellectuals. This shift, however, did not go as planned. 
The group's violent methods failed to win the support of the average Peruvian. Villagers faced constant brutality from Shining Path, with little to no protection from the military or intelligence agencies. Governments led by Alan Garcia and his successor, Alberto Fujimori, used scare tactics against locals. The Garcia administration, following in the footsteps of the preceding Baleonde government, resorted to torture and the killing of citizens, accusing them of supporting or showing sympathy for Shining Path. Undoubtedly, the conflict between Shining Path and the government in Peru resulted in widespread violence and significant loss of life. It is estimated that around 70,000 people lost their lives in the struggle over several decades. Shining Path employed harsh tactics and propaganda to recruit and control, especially among those most disenfranchised by Lima authorities. However, their violent means and shifting targets, including leftists and ordinary citizens, diminished public support. The government's response was equally brutal, with Peru's leaders, including Garcia and Fujimori, implementing authoritarian measures that resulted in numerous human rights abuses. Civilians were often caught in the middle, suffering from attacks by both Shining Path and government forces. The situation worsened under the Fujimori administration, with rising poverty and an increase in extrajudicial killings by government death squads. People suspected of being part of Shining Path or harboring anti-government sentiments were targeted. The conflict ultimately created a case of opposing interests, disregarding principles and rights on both sides. In 1992, following his auto coup, Fujimori seized control of Peru's press and other institutions, promising democracy within a year. While ruling by decree, this period saw increased violence and deaths due to the clash between Shining Path and Lima's security forces. The capture of Shining Path's leader, Abimael Guzman, on September 12, 1992, was a turning point. His arrest, achieved without bloodshed, was facilitated by the interrogation of a top lieutenant who revealed Guzman's hideouts. Fujimori publicized his success with the public humiliation of Guzman, signaling the disruption of Shining Path's hierarchy and leading to its eventual disintegration. A decline in political assassinations of moderate leftist figures followed. However, the victory over Shining Path was achieved at the cost of widespread human rights abuses against Peru's population. Post-capture, Guzman's call for peace led to a factional split in Shining Path, and the group has not regained its mid-1980s prominence. But the Shining Path doesn't seem to be over yet. Recent reports indicate a potential resurgence of the group, with signs of reorganization and rebuilding of its military strength against the Peruvian state. Over the last 10 years, authorities have managed to capture several key figures of the Shining Path, such as Comrade Feliciano in 1999 and Comrade Artemio in 2008. These captures reflect the successful efforts of the police in dismantling the organization. In a significant move toward justice, former President Fujimori is currently held by Peruvian authorities, facing trials for corruption and human rights violations. This shift away from past disregard for democratic norms and unchecked privilege is being hailed by human rights groups and victims' families in Peru. An instance of this enthusiasm was seen when the sentencing of four paramilitary group members for a 1992 massacre was met with celebration. However, recent incidents of political kidnappings and murders have raised alarms about a possible revival of Shining Path activities. The group is reportedly protecting drug traffickers and getting involved in coca production and distribution networks to finance their operations. This development could lead to an escalation in drug violence, a growing insurgency, and increased government repression in Peru. If you found the video helpful, give it a big thumbs up and don't forget to hit the subscribe button. Also, let us know in the comments if you want to see more videos on similar topics. You can also check out our previous video on Springfield 3. Goodbye until next time.